Verse 8, God knows people's hearts, and he confirmed that he accepts Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did us. So they were able to see that the Gentiles were receiving the Holy Spirit. No question about it. And this, I believe, demonstrates that when people receive the Holy Spirit, there's some evidence. All right? Something happens in our lives. It's not just believing. It's believing and becoming something special. All right, verse 9. He made no distinction between us and them. This is huge to a Jewish audience here. They're speaking to Jewish people that are believers. And he's saying, there's no difference between us as Jews and them as Gentiles. God saved them the same. God gave them the Holy Spirit the same. That distinction between Jews and Gentiles is gone. Everybody say gone. gone. Now, here's why I'm emphasizing this. It's because now we're 2,000 years forward. Have you noticed that? It's 2018. It's not 18. Okay. We're 2,000 years forward. There are some Gentile believers that think everything Jewish is godly. You know, and they think, oh, if I can do this, you know, it's old Jewish, and if I can do that, and if I can become this like the Jewish people and Jewish rabbis teach. Listen, that is so irrelevant to you. You are Gentiles, and you are saved by the blood of the Lamb. Now, we can learn a lot from Jewish people because we're engrafted into that covenant. We are engrafted in. But that, doesn't, that makes you spiritually Jewish. But that doesn't mean that because they wear a tassel to remind them about prayer that you ought to wear a tassel to remind you about prayer. It doesn't mean if the Orthodox Jews do this or do that, that if you do it, it's a real special uh, worship experience in your home. For people to say everything Jewish is more godly is absolutely absurd. All right, so I've had people through the years that get into a Messianic Jewish congregation and they love the Lord, but, but just somehow every little tidbit they can pick up about something Jewish, they just think it's so wonderful and it's deep and it's great. And I think all of that is true. All of that is wonderful, but all of that is not necessary because the blood of the lamb is sufficient to save and so when a Jewish person gets saved, here's what you've got. You've got a saved Jewish person. <laughs> if a Gentile gets saved, do you know what you have? You have a saved Gentile. Okay, have you ever noticed what happens to black folks when they get saved? Do you know what you get when a black person gets saved? You get a saved black person. Now, some of you are whites. Have you noticed, you Anglo folks, lily white? Okay? When you get saved, have you noticed what happens to you? You are a saved white person. You Hispanic folks, have you noticed what happens to you? When you get saved, you're a saved Hispanic. Okay? Now, you fellas... Have you noticed what happens to a man when a man gets saved? You end up with a saved man. <laughs> All right. So, you ladies, you ladies, when you get saved, what do you end up with? A saved woman, a saved lady. Okay, now, Jesus was a Jewish man. So when you, lady, you Gentile ladies get saved, if you were really saved, would you become a Jewish man? No, you're a saved Gentile woman. You don't become a saved Jewish man just because Jesus comes into your heart. Is that true or right? Is that right? Okay, right? Okay, this is the way God created it. And this is the miracle of salvation. And this is what's discussed in this chapter. That's why every one of us, we've got to use 
who we are and what we are for the sake of the gospel. But we aren't always needing to become somebody else. And we aren't always needing to become something else. So here he says, God knows people's hearts and he confirmed that he accepts Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. He makes no distinction between us and them. For he cleansed their hearts through, what's that word? Faith. Say it out loud. Faith. So why are you now challenging God by burdening all these women that they need to be men? <laughs> or by burdening these Anglo folks that they need to start looking like Middle Eastern men? Am I misreading this? Okay, here. Why are you now challenging God by burdening the Gentile believers with a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors were able to bear? In other words, all of our rules for the Jews, it's irrelevant to the others. Now, it's interesting and by the way, there are various rules in the Old Testament. The moral laws do apply to us. Okay? But the cultural laws and those types of things, that's what they're talking about here. Here they're talking about circumcision in particular. So why are you now challenging God by burdening the Gentile believers with a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors were able to bear? We believe that we are all saved. Notice this, everybody. This might be the most important verse in the New Testament. It says, we believe that we are all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. 